Hello. Sorry about the uh, short third video, but I just realized I forgot to tell you how to do one more thing, which is attach the uh, lower jaw. So what you need to do is you need to take a hub, uh, one that's standardly on the servo, works perfectly fine, and then drill a hole in it and tap it 440. And in this case, um, it doesn't so much matter, uh, and I'll explain a little bit uh, as we actually get to programming, if you're going to be using a, a software that only allows for 90 degrees of rotation versus 180 degrees of rotation, it's going to depend on how it behaves. But I've designed it in such a way that you really can't jam it. Um, so I'm going to put it uh, so it's aiming straight down with the servo at approximately the center position. And you'll see then if I use a quarter inch screw and put this in like this. Uh, it's going to depend on how much you want the jaw to actually open, but you cannot jam it. Okay. So with it straight down, the jaw is closed. And let me get this guy started in here like this. As usual, you don't want them tight. You just want it to be held like that. And then, of course, as it rotates, it will open and close the mouth. Now if you wanted it to open further, all right, and you had software that was set up to, to rotate the servo more than 90 degrees, you could obviously place it, um, for example, instead of here, right now I've got the servo all the way up as far as it can go counterclockwise. There's nothing stopping me from taking it and going even farther and rotating it up, although it does kind of get a little tough. And right now it comes down and of course you can see the mouth closes and opens. It's kind of nice to have it so when you turn it on that the servo puts it in the home position and the mouth is closed. So that's it for this short video and now I'll start programming it so you can see how it behaves.